Gordon Brown offended the entire Icelandic nation when he seized assets under anti-terror laws after several of their banks went bust. He may be long gone, but the British government is still trying to be repaid by Iceland for the money he gave to, to British depositors in Icelandic banks. The taxpayer is still £2.2 billion out of pocket, but a court ruling today may mean they never see it back. Does this mean you're really never safe when you save in a foreign bank? Joel Lydon has been following this saga from the start. Before the financial crisis, Iceland was best known here for its geysers, glaciers and Miss World victories. Then Iceland's banks went bust, taking the country down with it in 2008. The collapse also affected 230,000 UK depositors, whose savings in Icelandic banks suddenly disappeared. Their savings of £2.2 .2 billion had to be repaid by the Treasury here, which promptly demanded the money back from Reykjavik. Roughly half of that sum has been repaid already. But today's European Free Trade Association court ruling doesn't affect the dozens of British local authorities which also parked almost £1 billion of council taxpayers' money with ISAVE. The EFTA ruling means the Icelandic government wasn't in fact obliged to repay the debts incurred by privately owned banks. And Iceland's most famous daughter, Björk, is getting very excited about it in a tweet. Wow! And the implications could be very interesting for Britain, Iceland and the rest of the EU. This word that is good news for everybody involved. For Iceland, it, it's been under considerable uncertainty because of ISEF. And now that this uncertainty is lifted, it can get on with the very serious and needed business of rebuilding its economy. This is also a blessing in disguise for the UK, because if the UK had won, it might have been obliged to provide government guarantees for, for bank deposits something difficult to do in these austerity times when government finances are already under considerable strain. The then Prime Minister Gordon Brown opened a diplomatic wound between London and Reykjavik in 2008 when he invoked anti-terror laws to seize all Icelandic financial assets. Well what happened in Iceland is completely unacceptable. I, I've been in touch with the Icelandic uh, Prime Minister. I've said that this is effectively illegal action that they've uh, taken. Uh, we are freezing the assets of uh, Icelandic companies in the United Kingdom where we can. We will take further action against the Icelandic uh, authorities uh, wherever that is necessary to recover the money. Being lumped in with North Korea and Iran was one of the reasons why the Icelandic people twice rejected a plan to repay Britain in separate referenda. Four years on and the new UK government is quite sanguine about today's ruling which cannot be appealed. That's because it's received most of the money back from the carcass of Landsbanki which used to own iSave. So the message from the Treasury is regulators and legislators weren't doing their job up to 2008 financial crisis but we are now. Five years on and quite a few barn doors have been bolted in terms of financial regulation. Deposits of up to £85,000 are now automatically protected by law, but savers will doubtless think twice now before they entrust large sums with non-UK banks. Do you align well the Icelandic Finance Minister Katrin Julius' daughter is in Reykjavik. Uh, good evening, Minister. Um, you still owe us £2.2 billion. When are we going to get it back? Well, I, I just want to first say that uh, this ruling from this morning is, uh, I mean, it, it, it's, we of course welcome it in Iceland because it, it takes a lot of, uh, it takes its uncertain, legal uncertainties and puts that aside. And it's also very important to state that the, the estate of the failed bank will continue to pay out priority claims to depositors and creditors. Are they, as and they have been doing, as they have been doing, and that's why a lot of the money has already been paid been, off. They have been doing... But it's yes, 2.2 2 billion that, left. I, well, there are about 50% of the priority claims already paid out, and the estate will mm -hmm. continue to pay priority claims, and uh, we, it's estimated that the priority claims can be and will be uh, repaid in full. And that is the good news for, for everybody. Well, so I, I know that, that Icelandic uh, people felt very um, uh, put upon by Gordon Brown when he invoked these anti-terror laws. Was the British government wrong to give money back to British creditors, uh, sorry, depositors in Icelandic banks? 
uh, without knowing that it was going to get the money back? Well, like I said, the estate, uh, the estate is, uh, it's estimated that the estate will be able to pay back uh, fully to uh, all priority claims. And that How long is very will it important. take, do you think? Well, we have already uh, been able to pay out, or the, or the estate has already paid out about 50%. So, I mean, it, it, uh, the looks are good, and, and we are estimating that this can happen quite, quite rapidly in the, in the nearest future. But this is possible because... The Icelandic Parliament uh, implemented in October of 2008 an emergency act where all deposits were given a priority status. But so that's why this can happen now and this, well, that's why we are able to do this. Do you think that um, foreign investors should uh, deposit money in small countries? I mean, in, 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 when this all happened, the banks... Uh, were nine times the size of Iceland's economy. That wasn't healthy. I mean, do you think people should just back off the economies of small countries when they come to make deposits? Well, I think that uh, all of this uh, process and this, you could call, I call this a sad history, a sad story, this, this ICF issue. I think that this has been a very heavy and, and a very important learning process for all of us. And all the regulatory framework that the Icelandic government has been implementing in the past four years has all had the aim on uh, the goal that this could not happen again. And well, that, is, that is very, very important. And I think well, that uh, we were, our regulatory framework was not strong enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that uh, we, have, we have learned and we have changed. Um, a lot of what you have done uh, to stabilize the Icelandic economy, for example, uh, capital controls, uh, letting bondholders sink and so forth, you could never have done had you been within the EU. And yet I understand that you are very keen to join the EU. Well, we, of course, we have a very, you could say, uh, 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 we have a very different situation than many other European countries. We are a very small nation with our own currency. We are only 320,000 people. So it's very difficult to manage the currency once, we, once the bank fell. So it was important for us and we needed to, to have capital controls. Otherwise, things would have gotten a lot, lot worse here in Iceland. So I think that this has, we have the capital controls and the reason why they are here in Iceland, we have met a lot of understanding uh, on, that, uh, on that situation. But it is our aim and we have been f very focused on in the past four years in strengthening our economy so that we can start lifting the capital controls and that is uh, we have we are implementing a plan in order to do so so that will that will happen in the in the coming coming years and well, hopefully we will not have capital controls uh, very long. more uh, w well very long well just one final uh, question minister i mean you say we're going to get the money back but can we trust you of course. Well, like I said, this is this is uh, what the what the what we are doing. We have been paying out to priority claim depositors and creditors, and uh, this is uh, well. And the then the estate of the failed bank will continue to do so, uh, even though this uh, ruling was uh, like it was this morning. Uh, but the, I think that the main, main and the best thing about the ruling this morning is that now this uncertainty is out of the way and we can move on and leave this sad story behind us. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much as well.